Let me share my screen. All right. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so we are here and the topic uh, for this careers challenge for this Thursday is developing curiosity and the ability to ask good questions. Uh, why is this really a thing also when it comes to different workspaces or different environments it's always crucial it's always crucial to be curious around uh what you should be doing around what you have been communicated to that you probably are supposed to be working on for instance it's a it's an assignment or it's a new project or it's a new idea that is being generated how, how how do you ask the right questions? You know, how do you develop your curiosity? Because this is the biggest and most important thing, especially in workplaces. You know, people who always ask detailed questions and right questions, these people always get recognitions. You know, it shows that they have been following and that they care about what's going on within the within the organization. And that is why also this topic is very crucial. When I was thinking about how am I going to be delivering this, uh, my main, uh, my main uh, thoughts were that this is kind of a very broad topic. And the, the, I mean, how, how does someone really develop their curiosity? How do you get to know how to ask the right question. Yes, you can actually develop your ability to ask good question, but how do you develop your ability to increase your curiosity level? You know, without actually looking down because there are people who of course are curious, but also ask, uh, you know, not really right questions, like very weak questions, questions that you can also answer yourself. But how do you do this? So I decided that instead of me making a tutorial because of how even the nature of the task that we are going to be looking at, instead of me developing slides, it's better that I put everything that I'm thinking on this paper so that when you are also about to do this assignment, you can read it and it will feel like um, you are actually watching the whole presentation about this, you know. So I won't read any, everything for you. Really, uh, you will be taking the time just to go through it. But I will give you some summaries just on every paragraph. So starting with the first paragraph we have here, this is just the background. The background is, a, is quite longer so that you get the context of everything. We just have the task summarized here, you know. So yeah, let's just go through the statements that we have here. The first statement, it's all about um, um, the, the real meaning around curiosity. You know, curiosity is just anyone's strong desire to know or learn, you know, anything. It's like you have an interest in person or a thing or any experience that make you that leads you to making an inquiry around something. You are interested about something and then you really want to know deeper, the, the deep part of it or even some other aspects of that thing or even that person, the main definition. And then it is also very important to note, to note that being curious, it doesn't always implies that you don't have knowledge about a certain subject. It doesn't mean that. It means that the idea that one simply put open to learning in any intricacies of the unknown in the hopes of broadening and deepening their understanding, you probably have an idea of what that means, but you need clarity. That's what it means. And then curiosity, why are we really uh, referring to this or why, are we, why does this subject matter? It's because curiosity have led to the development of a lot of things. 
development of a lot of things. For instance, Elon, for instance, sat and was like, you know, NASA has been uh, going to different planets and exploring the possibility of lives there. And it was like, you know, I'm curious. I, I need to be launching some, uh, you know, some rockets just to go there and do the live experimentation there. Uh, you know, how how what was the possibility of us going to live there? That was just out of curiosity. So curiosity has played a very significant role, starting very, very far away in the fourth industry revolution, and which today runs the world, you know. And this is what the paragraph is about. So you just have to be reading more about it and also access the links that I've put here. It gives much more context about what I mean on every paragraph. And then next, it's an article a uh, psychological uh, kind of article from someone called Merlin. He's a PhD person. And in this article, she observes and research, um, you know, on the, on the intellectual curiosity and how it has a very big effect on the performance of hard work, on the performance as hard work. And when combined curiosity and hard work accounts, for success just as much as intelligence. I will give you an example. Um, you know, someone, for instance, already has an idea around what, what are we working on now? Okay, no, let me not use an example of what's going on now, but uh, around, for instance, how to do um, what? how to do designs in Figma, you know, like web designs in Figma. I, I think we can all understand that, you know, web designs in Figma, we, we are just looking at how, how, how is a way our landing page on our website is going to be looking like. And then uh, someone already has the intelligence, you know, and then there is me who doesn't have that kind of knowledge about it. But I go deeper and dig and just learn more about it, ask questions about how am I going to be uh, designing these, uh, what colors is your company following? Like, for instance, Ten Academy, of course, we use mostly uh, uh, red and white. So that means our website has to look like this and that. You know, I don't have the intelligence, but I'm combining my curiosity and the hard work I'm investing in this just to find out the very actual results that I should be um, having at the very end of the project. And to be honest, in most case scenarios, I will deliver as the same person who already have the intelligence. For for the, the, the only difference would be that that person who already have the knowledge are, around designing web designs in, in Figma, it will, it will just take them less time than me who is already looking for information before starting to work on it. But the results, the high probability is that they are going to be the same. So it's what you are going to be reading more into this specific article here. And then uh, we have also the processes, like uh, strategy, not, not processes, just strategies on how to promote uh, curiosity, especially in learning. Please, uh, this specific, uh, this specific um, drawing here, let me call it a draw, no, this specific image here, you will find more about it in this article. Um, you please take your time and also read it and look um, for new habits or activities that will help you to develop your curiosity, especially also in your learning journey. And uh, because of course, if you are not curious, you're unlikely to care enough to ask good questions. And of course, you will end up probably doing something that you should not be wasting your time on. And, you know, if you took time to ask those serious or uh, necessary or needed questions, you have come up with um, uh, wh what you were supposed to be doing, you know. So uh, the next paragraphs are also on asking the right questions. This is something 
uh, that we should be practicing, by the way, especially in a workplace where you are working with more intelligent people, with more knowledgeable people, you should be knowing what are the right questions to ask. When you feel like your question is not right, it's always better to do your little bit, a little bit of your research, you know, so that you get to understand that you truly don't, I mean, that your question is really right or you lacked some information. There are two different things. Uh, I will give you an example again. You have, uh, how can I call it? Oh, okay, for instance, there are, there are some times when we are asking when they're going to be uploading the videos on YouTube, but probably those videos are already uploaded. So that's not always the right questions to ask, you know. It's still, if you feel like you are not sure and you haven't checked if the videos are there, instead of asking that question, because it makes you look like you didn't care about checking, it's better you go check first and refresh and refresh and just be sure that, that those videos are not there. And then come in the channel and ask like, these videos are missing. You know, that, that's what it means when it comes to asking the right questions, which is very crucial in a workplace environment because nobody wants to be answering to small end questions that shows you that, that, that shows people that you don't care about the small, small stuffs uh, about what's going on, you know? So this, we'll be talking just about asking the right questions and especially what, what do we call a right question and how do you get to ask a right question? And then after that, sometimes people give you an answer that is quite not detailed, but how do you keep asking more questions behind the question that you were supposed to be asking, you know? So you just read more about the intellectual curiosity. We explain more about it. I try to really detail everything here, and I hope that it's going to be self-explanatory to everyone. And why did I leave it here? It's because of the task we have below. So let's go to the task, and you're going to be understanding exactly uh, why we also needed a whole detailed content up there for everyone to read by themselves. So the main task, it's... Um, you are suppose suppose that you are the second employee to join a fintech company startup which is offering credit scoring predictions for uganda on the basis of the mobile credit purchases i mean uh this is like a uh, this is like a company in Uganda. Can I say that it's going to be working as MTN, but it's providing some credit scoring predictions when you use your credit, when you get to purchase the credits on your mobile. And then the CEO of the, that fintech company who has developed the algorithm as part of the PhD research, as part of as part of her PhD research. And for you, your task is just going to be that you're going to be helping her commercialize this. Your CEO wants to choose a cloud platform between AWS, GCP, or Azure for commercialization. And you are preparing for a 30 minutes meeting where you will both meet and recommend her for the choice of the cloud platform between the three. I will give you uh, the why we chose the topics that probably most of us don't have information about. It's because you have to develop curiosity around something you don't know. Simple. You have the, our curiosity develops itself around things that we don't know. That's when we go to dig deeper and understand them and, uh, you know, get to do the task using the information we received. So that's why we looked for a context that probably most of us doesn't have, uh, don't have information about. But it's easy. We're not going to go into a technical things here. And remember that her main goal is to raise the investment and exit in five years crucial information. So you will, you will just look for what to do with this information when you are doing the exercise. 
So what is the main task? Using the KFT technique, I've put it here. This is the technique that is used worldwide when it comes to how you develop uh, your ability of curiosity and ability of asking re real-time questions or even relatable and knowledgeable questions. So you are going to be using this technique and brainstorm for at least 30 questions. For at least 30 questions, how are you going to do this? You are going to think about various aspects that could influence the choice of a cloud platform for hosting the credit score a logarithm and then generate a, 30, a list of 30 questions. Again, pay attention. The questions should focus on non-technical aspects. Don't go into anything technical because we don't have time to learn more about that. Just the questions make them focusing uh, on the non-technical aspects. For example, you can explore questions related to business strategies, budgeting, and regulatory compliances, which don't necessarily require any in-depth technical understanding. I hope this is clear. You can ask yourself, for instance, uh, um, I know, I was going to give an example and which is actually the task and it should be wrong. Just develop 30 questions. You don't have to have the answers to the questions, but just have a list of questions. Like if someone just came to you and be like, I'm looking forward uh, to choose a cloud platform that I'm going to be using for this algorithm, for this thing that I'm developing, you know? The the whole thing about the fintech uh, startup, the, the whole process about the, the credit scoring predictions that I want to bring in place. I mean, this whole thing, a logarithm that I'm trying to develop. And then they be like, I, I need your ideas. You know, I, I, I need your ideas and I want to know which one I can use just be, between these. Am I going to use Amazon Web Service? Am I going to use GCP or Azure? And this is your CEO, and you don't have time just to ask any questions. You don't have information about this. So for you to help her decide which kind of questions are you going to ask, ask yourself that you know are going to be giving you the kind of information you need to know which one between the three platforms are you going to be using. So just think, uh, think it on the budgeting part, on the business strategy, like, you know, do you think this probably takes, uh, um, how can I say, um, um, do you think that this probably, for instance, Azure is super expensive than just acquiring AWS? How do you think on the regulatory compliance part? Do you think AWS is just, is open, to use in Uganda? You know, those kind of questions. Just what kind of questions are you going to give her as a guidance to her to make that decision? And then after listing the 30 questions on B, you are going to be listing the top five questions. Just among the 30, you are going to pick the five questions that you consider the most critical in making the recommendation. Just five questions out of the 30. And just to give you a hint here, um, no, no hint. I, I, I was going to answer the question, which is not okay. But yeah, you totally understand. Out of the 30 questions, just pick five that you think she should be considering more than all the other 25. And then number three, C, you are going to be listing the final guiding five questions. Sort your top five questions from the first key to consider to the fifth list to consider. Simply base your sorting on the importance, relevance, or even impact. And the question should be the key focus during the 30 minutes meeting to guide the decision making process. I hope this is also clear. Like from the five, we have just a general list of five questions. Then on the C, you are going just to sort them from the very first one. Like, 
please, Madam CEO, this is the very crucial one, the very first one. You know, consider asking yourself this question. And if you have an answer, then it will help you decide which one are you going to go with between the three. And then number two, and then number three, and then number four, and then number five. Just that. Those are the questions that you're going to be considering during a 30 minutes uh, meeting. This is an easy assignment, but I don't want really let's be ethical here and don't not use any ai or you know chat gpt or google board because i know it can generate this in just one minute but it won't serve the purpose of this specific challenge you know so just for you if you get to read a bit about these three you will get to have questions to ask here it's simple very simple. Me, myself, I don't have a background in tech, but I developed this. And it's very doable for everyone. So yeah, this is it. For the marking rubric, we are going to be uh, um, looking for... Oh, okay, I had to change this. Give me a second. Okay, I need to refresh. Something was removed, but it was still reflecting there. Okay, now I can share again. <clears throat> can you see my screen? Okay. All right. So the marking rubric, we're just going to be seeing if you have managed to use the key of the technique and what is your level of curiosity it's saying 300 god sorry and uh the reflection part um this was also removed excuse me guys i don't know why not everything is not reflecting Okay, um, I think I should check the access again because most of the things I can see that someone like reverted the document to where it was before. 
which is not okay. But yeah, I try to summarize it here on how it should be. Yeah, so the, we are just going to be looking at the KFT technique, uh, the curiosity, and then uh, the five top questions you generated. I will put here more description about it. And then the list of final sorted five questions, and then the writing. That will be it. We have more reference that you can be considering. So because this was a lot of information, let me give you a summary again. We have the background about uh, curiosity and we have more information and things to that you can read and help you understand, you know, uh, how you can better do the task. Then we have on asking the right question, we have its background and we have also what does it mean to ask the right question? How do you ask the right question? How do you even get to ask more and more other questions to support the information that you received? And then from there, we have the task, the task which is for you to imagine uh, that you, for you to imagine that you are an employee joining a FinTech startup and the startup has developed a credit scoring algorithm for Uganda-based mobile credit purchase and your CEO who, who also developed that same algorithm want to choose the, a cloud platform just between AWS, GCP or Azure and uh, you are going to be just recommending them which one they can be using spe specifically for um, their commercialization. That is it. And what is the objective of the CEO here? The CEO main objective is to raise the investment and potentially exit the business in five years. She is just going to be using that to raise the investment and exit in specifically five years. And then what is the main task? Your role is to consider various factors and questions to make any informed recommendation on which cloud platform the startup should use. You will just ask questions. You won't draw any conclusion like, oh, from all these, I suggest that we use uh, one of the three. No, because we are not looking for answers to that question. Don't draw any conclusion just list your questions. So on the first task and brainstorming at least 30 questions, you are going to be thinking about various aspects that could influence the choice of a cloud platform for hosting specifically a credit scoring algorithm. I hope that is clear. And then you generate a list of questions that covers different and technical aspect of it, as we saw here. And then you go, draw five questions from your 30 questions, which you think are crucial for her to be considering, questions that you, um, you are going to be recommending her to look at why she makes her decision. And then finally, you look on your top five and then you sort them in order of importance, relevance, and impact. And those questions are actually the one that your 30 minutes meeting with your CEO are going to be focusing on. And then the task is done. Is it clear? Is it a bit confusing? But for me, I think it's very clear and actually easy to go through. Okay. I can see some people say it is clear. Oh, thank you so much. No questions, any questions? Any questions? Okay, all right. If there are no questions, then let's go and do this. Uh, they, I hope the submission part is, on, is not also gone. Okay, yeah, submission, just do Google Slides or PowerPoints with a maximum of 10 slides and convert them into PDF, then submit on tanks. Please pay attention about the actually final, final five questions that you will be putting here, here specifically on C. 
do we need to make separate slide for two and three no you don't just put all of make sure that all of this fits into a maximum of 10 slides i think there are many actually slides are many but yeah everything has to be into the same slide same pdf okay thanks carrot any other question Hey, I hope there are no questions. So thank you so much for joining. Uh, and then about uh, Rodas, is Rodas here? About the holiday that is supposed to be happening? No, Rodas is not here. But from the information that I received from her is that we won't be having any other uh we won't be having a holiday why because friday is a bit relaxed they removed any tutorial that was supposed to be happening on friday so friday here let me pull um let me pull the weekly the notion page so that we can see it together let me hope it's revised No loading, loading. Okay, probably because it's raining here. But when you check it on your side, when you check the notion page on your side, you will get to see that Friday is relaxed. We will attend the stand up as usual, you know, as obligated. Then we get to attend the career session, the trainee led one. And we get to have the CBS right after the trainee led conversation. And the rest of the day we just be for everyone uh, to work on the to work on every assignment that you should be submitting on Saturday. So that is it. There is no tutorial tomorrow. There are no big things. We are just going to be attending relaxed things. So yeah, that is it. Any questions or if you feel like uh, it's really really not fair, uh, you can reach Rodas and explain to her further. But so far, that's the information I have. 